Hi, my name is Rudy Seitz. Welcome to the 31st take of this video that I've been trying to make for weeks now to help you learn how to circular breathe on the didgeridoo. I've done a whole bunch of work for you that you have no idea about, starting with me learning how to circular breathe on the didgeridoo just a few months ago and then trying to make a video about it and having stuff not come out right and then having stuff come out right but my mom would call and that would abort the whole video because I was doing it on my phone and I forgot to put it on silent and I, I've been doing all this for you, so if you want to learn how to circular breathe on the didgeridoo, you owe it to me to watch this video till the end and succeed at learning to circular breathe on the didgeridoo, which would make me very proud. So let's, let's get started. Now I can assure you that if your goal is to learn to circular breathe on the didgeridoo, You have come to the right place. We're going to learn how to circular breathe in four simple steps. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started with step one. But unfortunately we have a problem because you know, due to the internet, we don't have any attention span these days. So let's skip step one and let's just jump right ahead to step four, right? Okay, so in step four, we learn how to circular breathe. Let's, let's, let's try it, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it right now. You know, what if I just, what if I just said right now, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna circular breathe. Like, I can't do that, right? Because I'm, I'm making a video about circular breathing. So it's like, the pressure is on for me to do this. It's like, what, what if I thought that the way to do it would, was to go like this? Then I would be an imposter, right? And no one could tell me that I had imposter syndrome because I would be an authentic imposter, right? I'd be a real imposter. Like if I really thought that this is how you do it, then that, you know, I, I would be I would be the one guy that thinks that. So, okay. I'm I'm waiting to circular breathe. I'm willing to circular breathe. I'm wanting to circular breathe. So, uh, okay, enough, enough, enough joking around. Let's let's get let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. That's the basic idea. So now that we've, we've gotten a taste of what it looks like and sounds like, let's go back and do our homework. So going back to step one here, all we have to do in step one that we skipped before is just make a drone sound and make a spit sound separately. Just get familiar with these two ways of making sound on the ditch. Let's try it. That was my drone. That was my spit. Success. So what I've just done is I made a drone sound and then separately I made a spit sound. Now, these two sounds represent two different mechanisms of sending air through the ditch. When we make a drone, we're effectively exhaling. We're using our diaphragm to push air from our lungs up through the windpipe and out through the mouth into the body of the ditch. When we spit, we're collecting air in our cheeks 
and holding it there. And then we're using our cheek muscles to compress that air cavity and expel the air out through the lips into the body of the dig. When we do that, there's no uh, use of the diaphragm, no involvement of the lungs whatsoever. So drone, spit. This one uses the lungs, this one doesn't. Let's move on to step two. So in step two, step one was gentle, wasn't it? It was, it, was a, it was a nice, kind step, right? It didn't, it treated you okay, didn't it? So hopefully we, we can expect good things from step two as well. All right, let's, let's do step two, right? So in step two, we're gonna take the drone and the spit that we made in step one, and we're gonna combine them into one continuous sound that we'll call a drone spit. Let's try it. I'm going to produce a drone spit right now. I will do it again. One more time. So what I did there was I took my drone and as I was making the drone, I switched from the drone mechanism, which is an exhaling mechanism, into the spitting mechanism where I'm using squeezing my cheeks to push the air out into the ditch without using my lungs or diaphragm. Now, when I first tried to do this, it might not come out so smooth or so connected. It might sound like... Um, similar to step one, where there was a drone, and then there was a spit. So you try to connect them, but at first it doesn't work, and it sounds like But then once you get them connected, it sounds like this. Now the cool thing about the drone spit is that the resonance of the drone carries over into the spit, right? So you're hearing that nice bass sound uh, of the dig, and it doesn't immediately stop when we begin switching from the, the exhaling mechanism to the spitting mechanism. The, the resonance of the dig stays active into the spit. We just did step two, now let's move on to step three, which is a really cool step, right? So if, if, there, if there's a cool, step one was gentle, step two was, uh, you know, increasing, increasing uh, interest and potential, and now in step three, we're gonna do something totally amazing, which is actually not that amazing when you think about it, because it's really easy, and it's really straightforward, but let's try it, let's try it. Let's get to it. So we're gonna take a drone spit and we're gonna inhale at the same time. How is that even possible? Well, it's possible because it's possible. There's nothing, there's nothing to stop it from happening, right? Because the spit mechanism is not using the lungs at all. And therefore, it doesn't stop us from doing something that uses our lungs at the same time. So we can spit and we can inhale at the same time. Now, when we do that on the dig, it's going to allow us to transform our drone spit into what we'll call a drin spit, in for inhale. Uh, so the inhale is gonna happen at the same time as our spit. It's gonna sound the same as the drone spit, it's just that we're gonna be taking in air during that spit, um, and that'll allow us to keep, keep doing this over and over. So this was a drone spit. Now, 
if I take an inhale on the spit portion, I get a drin spit. Great, we've done step three, we've made a drin spit. Now, okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna get to step four. Now we've already done step four at the beginning, but now we're gonna, now we're gonna go back and do step four and, and do circular breathing with the knowledge and experience that allows us to to do it. So, so, so here we go. What we're going to do is take one drin spit and connect it to another drin spit. Just like we did in step two, where we took a drone and connected it to a spit. Well, now we're going to take a drin spit and connect it to another drin spit. Now, there's a little trick that you need to know to, to make this easier. When we've been doing our drin spits, we've been exaggerating the spit at the end. It has this little high-pitched tail where the, you know, the sound seems to get faster and higher. And that, that gives, gives a listener a clue that uh, there's a spit going on. It ends with that, that, that little sharp sound. Um, let's do the, the drin spit as we've been doing it. Okay, um, that was actually a drone spit because I didn't inhale, but I can inhale and make it a drin spit. Okay, now, but to make it easier to connect one of these guys to another one, what we're gonna do is cut off the tail of the spit so it's not as extreme. It just kind of, st it just kind of stops uh, midway. So that'll sound more like this. Okay, so I cut off the tail of the spit. I'm still switching mechanism from exhaling drone to expelling air from the cheek spit. I'm still switching from one to the other, but um, it's not as obvious because I've cut off that, that spit tail. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can try connecting one drin spit with the, with the chopped off tail to another one. That's it. I was circular breathing. So you can do that too. And um, let's, let's, uh, let's congratulate ourselves on completing step four. And since we, 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 did, this, we did this so quickly and, and we're done already, let's, let's go on and do an extra credit step, step five, just to make this whole process a little more secure and more comfortable. So in step five, we're gonna take a closer look at how we're initiating our spits and our inhales. They're happening at the same time, but the question is which one is driving the other? And when we do circular breathing, we can think about it as that we're doing spit-driven inhales, or we can think about doing inhale-driven spits. Spit-driven inhale means that when we take a spit, and maybe we're spitting on a, on a beat, right, like every other beat, uh, we use the spit as our cue that now's our opportunity to take an inhale. So it's kind of the spit that comes first, and it tells us that we also can take an inhale uh, at that same time. In the other approach, um, inhale-driven spit, we might be making a drone um, and, and at some point we feel like we want to inhale. Um, and that feeling of wanting to inhale, uh, 
becomes our uh, like our, our motive or our, our, our reason for switching from a drone into a spit. So it's like the desire to, to inhale starts us off and we switch over to a spit in order to make that inhale possible to complete. Let's, let's try both of these. So let's do a spit driven inhale where I'm gonna be spitting uh, every every other beat. So let me t tap the digs like this just to keep a little bit of a beat. So I'm spitting every other beat and the spit is my cue that I can also inhale. Um, now, if I were to do an inhale driven spit, it would be like I'd be just making a drone and at some point I'd feel like I wanna inhale and at that point I spit. Inhale driven spit. So the idea is, it's not that one of these is better than the other. They're both just different ways of, of going about it. And when you get practice with both of them, the whole technique of circular breathing feels uh, more solid and more comfortable. Okay, so if you have followed along with me uh, throughout this entire process, starting with step one, where we made a, a drone sound, and then separately we made a spit sound, and then moving on to step two, where we combined our drone and our spit into a drone spit, and then moving from there to step three, where we added an inhale to our drone spit to make it a drin spit, and then moving from there to step four, where we were finally circular breathing by combining one drin spit with another drin spit to create a smooth connected sound where we were periodically inhaling as the sound continued. And then moving from step four to step five, where we contrasted the idea of a spit driven inhale with an inhale driven spit. If you have followed along with me through this entire process, Congratulations. I hope this has helped you solidify your own circular breathing technique or move further along in your journey of learning circular breathing on the didgeridoo. And I hope that um, you found this informative and instructive enough that you will permit me to now go on vacation and I'm looking for advice, where should I go? Should I go to Tahiti? Should I go to Aruba? Should I, should I go to the Poconos? Should I go to Alaska? I, I, need, I need advice and guidance, so please tell me where I should go on my vacation now that I've finished all this work that I've been doing for you to help you circular breathe. Okay, I wanna hear, I wanna hear that you can do it now. I want to hear you circular breathing Thank you very much. I'm Rudy Seitz.